Welcome, welcome. Okay, welcome, welcome to the Labrador Energy Podcast. Uh, another day, another episode, another week. I have been very religious with this for the past couple of weeks. And today we have another young cultural comedian of sorts. We have Abib Shah. Is that how you say it, Abib Shah? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Tell You're doing better than everyone else. Tell us a bit more about yourself, Abib Shah. Us, the, <laughs> the audience here. The, well, the listeners at home. <laughs> first of all, the name is Abib Shah. Mm-hmm. It means desire, which is pretty weird, but okay. yeah, uh, Abi is the short name for white people, so let's just call me Abi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm from India, and I moved to Berlin exactly a year ago. Okay. And I started doing comedy in January, so pretty new to the scene. Very good, very good. Yeah. Well, where are you from in India? Let's let's go let's go deeper to the subcontinent. Okay, I'm from the east. The state is called Orissa. Orissa, like Oris- the chicken. No. Okay. <laughs> That's an O. Orissa, okay. Yes, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's a pretty small town, very conservative religious town. Religious? Very religious, yes. How religious? Extremely. Do they stone people? <laughs> no, but uh, that's a town where uh, Dutch people go because they believe in our God for some reason. Yoga? Uh, well, yoga is everywhere in India, but yeah, Dutch people pretty much believe in the same God that we do. How big is the, how big is the city? Not really big. It's a very small town. It's a village. Is it a village? Uh, it's a town. Are you, are you a village girl? <laughs> no, I'm a small town girl. How big? How big? How small is it? Because this is India. You know, everything is bigger in India. Uh, well, the population would be equal to the population of Berlin. Oh, two million. Yeah, small town, guys. It's uh, you know very small. That's uh, half Bulgaria. But for the listeners, that's like free, uh-huh. free Estonia's guys. Yeah. Okay, Pretty very nice. nice. And what, uh, you know, the Labrador Energy Podcast, we're trying to figure out what was the, the thing that determined you to like, what was your, your sense of adventure? You know, why did you leave India? Did you leave before? Tell us a bit more about that before we go into okay. the comedy stuff. Um, well, I could not uh, take the sexism anymore in the society, the oh. casual sexism in India. The casual sexism in India? Well, yes. This is, this is a topic that we haven't explored here <laughs> on the Labrador Energy Podcast. Tell us a bit more about the casual sexism in India. Okay, so I work as a software engineer, Mm -hmm. like every other person in India. Okay. And I worked on all these huge corporates and uh, once my boss said to me that, see, we have a woman in the team who has an opinion on politics. It was the elections time and I was just talking to my colleague, I was saying that I would never vote for a religious party. Mm -hmm. And my boss overheard it and he said this. And everybody just laughed because that seemed like a joke, but it wasn't. Why can't I have an opinion on politics? But he, and he was like, like these. he emphasized, we have a woman. Yes. Oh, we have a woman in the team who has opinion on politics. Well, so. it sounds like this guy should be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Um, also, when I asked for a raise, he, he said to me that, uh, why do you need so much money? You're single, you live with a dog. If you want to be a millionaire, just marry one. Really? Yes. That's exactly what he said, word <laughs> yes, by word. Yes. Wow. If somebody says that to me here in Germany, it would be a pretty big issue. Yeah, you get fired for that. <laughs> yeah, totally. What the fuck? How old? How old is this dude? Thirty-six, thirty-seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does he have a family? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's a, so. Did you do anything about that? Did you report it or? Yeah, I did, but. And I also, I did not see the point because nothing would happen. He would write me an apology email and everything would be okay. Mm. So that was when I applied for a visa. And you were like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah I applied for a job seeker visa. Mm-hmm. So I quit my job, applied for a job seeker visa and moved to Germany. Uh, it was difficult to get the job seeker visa? Yeah, yeah. You have, there's certain criteria. You have to have five years of work experience. Mm-hmm. And you have to also prove that you have sufficient balance survive six months in Germany because that's the amount of time you get to find a job here. Mm-hmm. And um, also you have to prove to them that you're not going to live in Germany forever and you're going to come back to the country. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which is true, she's not living here forever. <laughs> yeah. But like, were there any <laughs> other elements of, let's explore more the topics of sexism in India. Wow, that's pretty heavy. Though. Heavy stuff, guys. You know, we only <laughs> tackle heavy stuff here at the laboratory. You know, next, next, on the next episode, rape. <laughs> Yeah, I would sign up for that. Is that funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rape podcast? I, yeah, yeah, I think I have good but opinions what, on that. What about your parents? Were your parents like sex? Are you, are you a single child? No, I have a sister. Ah, okay. Boom. So they were like, Yeah. you should follow your dreams. Oh, certainly not. 
No, okay. I said it's a conservative religious uh, town that I'm from. So my family is pretty conservative, very middle class, you know, typical Indian family. So did they push you towards software engineering, or is that a? Uh, in India, you have three career choices: mm -hmm. doctor, engineer, disappointment. Okay. Yeah. So I was not good enough for medicine. Did you so, try doing medicine? Yeah, I did because that was my father's dream to become a doctor. So I had to fulfill right. the dreams. Right. But I couldn't since I'm not good enough for medicine. So mm -hmm. software was the second option. But I always wanted to do software. So okay, clicked. you always wanted to do software. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did not think of uh, think that there's any other career choice because mm -hmm. that's like imprinted in your head that you have to become a doctor or an engineer. Right. There's no other career choice. Right. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, my, my mom wanted to become a priest. <laughs> That's uh, okay. So then you kind of left. And did you, did you experience uh, any sexist acts in Berlin since you've come here? Not yet. Not yet? No. Very good. Okay. So uh, let's talk a bit more about India. Did you do stand up in India? Was there any interest at that time or? No, not really. You're the first comedian that I've ever seen. Really? Yes. You saw, I'm the first comedian you saw in Berlin? Yes. Which show? Um, at Laughing Spring. Oh, Laughing Spring. You came in, you're like, oh, this guy's right. Yeah. That's, okay. that's when I decided, okay, I want to be this oh, yeah, guy. Oh, yeah, the first, the first show. You wanted to be me. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. How's that working out? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> very good. So, wait, you arrived here when? Six months ago? Seven, nine months ago? Uh, a year? Last year in October. Ah, okay. So, about yeah. a, almost, just over a year now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very nice. And then, uh, what, uh, th that was just this, this guy doing stand up. I want to do like what this guy's doing. That was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, well, he's already here first, guys. <laughs> I mean, I was new in Berlin. I didn't know anybody else. So. Have you done stand-up in India so far? No, never. Okay. I haven't been to India since I've moved to Germany. Ah, okay. Okay, very nice. Yeah. And then, uh, what? tell us a bit more about the move. Was it a difficult move, adjusting? Why Germany of all places? Because I would have chosen Canada because we speak the language and uh, right. getting a PR is easy. Also, we are kind of obsessed with Trudeau for some reason. The Indian people? Yeah, yeah, we love Justin Trudeau. Uh, this is another <laughs> another break, uh, like a breaking moment on the Lamborghini podcast. Oh, he's so cool. He gives us PR so easily. He gives Indians PR, is that what you saying? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of Indians in Canada. But a lot of them, I'm assuming they're like high-skilled uh, software engineers, doctors. Yeah, or customer, Uber right? drivers. Or Uber drivers? Yeah, yeah, those uh, are the two options. Th those are how they qualify. All right, yeah. you want to be a doctor or Uber driver? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's how they do it in... Um, well, like, okay, would you consider Uber driving a low-skilled job, yeah? Well, if, um, yeah, according to Indian society, yeah. I mean, it is not that, doesn't require a high level of skill, yeah. just to drive, right? Exactly, yeah. Because I think, like, low-skilled jobs are actually in high demand in Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, like carpenter, is that, is carpenter a low-skilled job? Uh-huh. Okay, or like builders, or like, you know, yes. and they pay, like, insane amounts of money, because there's yeah. no, nobody wants to do it. Yeah. Like, uh, the whole country has PhDs, and no one can, you know, unclog a toilet. Yeah, yeah. So then that's one day, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the modern world, right? Yeah. Everybody has five masters, but nobody knows how to fix a sink. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay, very interesting. Um, so you came here, what was the process? You just went to the immigration, you know, you got an apartment, was it difficult? Yeah, very much. So I did not... <laughs> Very much. It was traumatic. <laughs> yeah, I chose Germany because there's a lack of IT skills here, mm -hmm. which made me think that, okay, it would be super easy to get a job in right. IT. But I applied for 206 jobs. Oh, you counted all of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Keep counts. Right. And uh, I got through six of them. Okay. And um, most of them were... Some of them were in Munich. I didn't want to go to Munich. Right. And also they didn't send the letters and everything. But mm -hmm. this was the, the, I applied to one job in Berlin and I got it. Okay. One so, in Berlin and got it. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Great hit rates. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Nice. And you are now a software engineer? Is that yes. your official, what, what, what do you code? Um, well. <laughs> you don't have to say the name of the company. You just say, what are you guys building? Uh, we have this market research software. We do market analysis for big brands, but I don't care about what the software does. What I care about is fixing the bugs in the software. Okay. That's my job. Is that, that's your, are you a bug fixer? Is that what's called? Yes. yes. So I you're like finding it. them and you're fixing them? Yes. Okay. What's, what's been the most difficult bug to fix so far? Oh my God. <laughs> well, it's never that the bug is difficult to resolve. It's always the users that don't know how to use the software. Ah, uh, okay. The bug is the user. Yes. The biggest bug of all. Yes. Okay, very, <laughs> nice. very good. It's a user problem. Yes. And uh, do you have like any other female some software engineers in the team or are you the only one? Uh, in the team? No. I'm the only one. Really? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, I have my privileges. 
but <laughs> okay very good we're going yeah. from sexism to privileges yeah hey no sexism in berlin at least i haven't faced any so well, what's what's the, what's the privileges that you get um Can they call and be like sorry guys it's that time of the month and everybody <laughs> nobody asks questions oh i wish <laughs> it's, it's been three times already Abisha. what's happening <laughs> No, people do listen to me here, which is great. Ah. My opinion is taken into consideration. Well, uh, well, uh, what, what a low, privilege. What, yeah, <laughs> what a low bar for, <laughs> for achievement. Yeah. I mean, it's just still a lot of sex months happening like, everywhere, I think, in Romania as well. Everywhere east of Berlin, I guess. Okay. All right, so tell us a bit more about your journey to stand-up. You know, you've been doing it for a couple of months now. Yeah. How has your experience been? I started on 27th of January. The way I started was pretty funny because I signed up. Uh, I went to Laughing Spree three times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Saw you and Chris, signed up. You guys sent me a text on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Went to my spam, I never checked. Oh, really? Yeah, so that time when I performed for the first time, I was just there to be in the audience. I right. bought tickets. And, right. and when I go there, you're like, you're in the second half. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I have no materials. I just kind of improvised the whole thing. Okay. And it worked. I was just roasting Chris. It, was, it worked and I was so overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, these are some bunch of random thoughts I had in the shower and this is working. And what do you so, think, why do you think it worked? I don't know. I mean, I have never had that kind of uh, great gig until now. That was my best one. Because, that was your best one? Yes, because I was nervous. I was just like, you know, nobody knows me here. If I suck, then I'm never going to come back. Right. Okay. So I was just saying whatever I can. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. a, that's an interesting insight to that. You just, yeah. cause, maybe because you weren't putting any pressure on you or you didn't yeah, really care. Yeah, exactly. Now I think, oh shit, I missed this line. I did not do this joke. I did not do the pauses right. When I did it for the first time, I did not know about all these things. Right. So I was just doing whatever came to my mind. So would you consider yourself naturally funny? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I would think you, so. Hey, when I performed for the first time, you said to me after the show that you were not bad for first time. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds good. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm usually a jackass. <laughs> I'm usually like, you should quit now. <laughs> well, yeah, no. you didn't say that. I'm no, I, I, I've never told anybody to quit. I'm like, you know, it's a project. I think in terms of like people that I have seen starting off bad, but like turn out good. There's quite a lot of people in the scene that like, you know, at the start, they're like really, really bad. And then and I've told this several times to Nav. I think when Nav yeah. started off, it was like, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a train wreck. And okay. The biggest problem he had, he used to keep the mic over here. Okay. And, <laughs> wow. and then like, we'll talk like this. So I'll always like do this in front of him. Like... <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I think that this, I, to be honest, I think a lot of the female comedians that I've seen uh, uh, kind of start, they tend to have, I don't know, a bit of confidence at the start. Not, mm -hmm. not a lot of them, but like the ones that have stuck around. Like you kind of, I think you did it that spree, Kate did it that spree. And it's a lot about, uh, every time somebody has more of a proactive mindset about them, mm -hmm. they tend to do a good job. Okay. Like, for example, you know, you by yourself decided to come to Berlin, right? Yeah. Was anyone else kind of like, you know, I leave this country? No, no. It yeah, so usually I think if someone is proactive, they tend to, you know, do well. You know, what they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And how has the journey been since then? Um, with the two lockdowns, I have been on stage 63 times. The goal was to do 100 this year, but I could only make it to 63. Nice. But yeah, pretty good. 63 really times? Happy. That's just, guys, 63 times on stage in the span of a year, right? Yeah. That's that's at least once a week. No more than and some weeks. Yeah, more. yeah. some days I doubled up because right. lockdown. So. And, and again, remember this is with lockdown. This shows you how much stage time you have here in Berlin, right? Yeah. Do they do do they do stand up in your uh, your city of Orissa? No, no, no. no. Nobody no, does it. No, there is, is no concept of stand up there. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I was talking to Mohit last episode. See, I'm, I'm 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 on an Indian streak at the moment. Mm -hmm. Last time was Mohit. Now it's you. Next time I don't know Nav. Yeah, it's but little... Mumbai has a huge scene. Mumbai, right. Bangalore. Mumbai is west, yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, so it's like the west and the the east. Is Mumbai west? Um. Yeah, pretty much central. Central. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. And what has what any any stories from your uh, time as a stand-up comedian, as an amateur? Um. Well. <laughs> have you gotten paid for a gig yet? Oh yes, yes. I the highest I have been paid is twenty two euros, and this was in Prague. Oh, very yeah, good. So I was just visiting Prague, so I was like, yeah, let me sign up for a comedy show while I'm there. Okay. And I signed up. Um, I did three shows there. I got paid for two. Okay, very nice. Yeah. But what shows were these? Uh, this was in Comedy Cellar. I don't remember the name of the thing. Okay. But um, I think uh, Chris has done a show there. 
But yeah, after this, um, this uh, you remember Grant from Prague? Who? Grant the Irish. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, he came around. Yeah, he saw me there and he asked me to open for him when he was doing his Europe tour. Mm -hmm. So that what? was a good exposure. Where did you do it? In Space Medusa. Ah, Medusa, okay, yeah, gotcha, okay. Yeah. yeah. But getting to know other people, mm -hmm. how the comedy scene is in Prague, and if my material works in another country. Did it work? Yeah, it did. Okay. Well, I just had to lose all the Berlin stereotypes, and you know, my, most of my jokes are super personal. Right, right, right. So how can, personal are they? Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> let's not go there. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Save what it for what, your what dark kind of comedy. topics do you kind of approach? Really dark. I kind of have a thing for dark comedy now. All right, okay. Yeah, and yeah. let's explore that. Why do you think you have a thing for dark comedy? Uh, mostly because of childhood trauma. Okay, that's a Growing good up start. in India, I guess. That, that is the childhood trauma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the process of growing up in India. Yeah, yeah. And, and have you explored doing dark jokes like in, you know, before stand-up? Where you're like, you know, doing software developments like, hey guys, <laughs> abortions, am I right? <laughs> No, not really. It really started when you uh, started the dark comedy special. Mm -hmm. I did not hold back in that show. Okay. Oh, you did four of those and I was in three of them. Right, right, right. Yeah. I was, I'm going to say everything that I haven't spoken about in 20 years. Really? Okay. Yes, okay. yes. That That's was when I decided I'm going to tell everything. Ther Therapeutical, so it's... Yes, a... yes. It acted like therapy. Okay, well, didn't you find it difficult, you know, saying difficult things in front of like a crowd of strangers? Uh, yeah, sure. The most intimate joke kind of bombed three times. It only worked once in Prague when there were the there were ninety percent women in the audience. That's ah, okay. when the joke worked. So right. I kind of understood that okay, women are able to relate to this joke. Right, right, right. But this is not a joke that I can do everywhere. Right. Okay. So I kind of <laughs> got rid of the joke and kind of made a different joke out of it. Right. Yeah, but it works at your dark comedy special. I mean, that I mean people, people come there with a the mindset yeah, of like, yeah, you know, all right, we're going to hear some fucked up stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes there's a lot of fucked up stuff around, you know? People, a fucked up shit happens in the world. <laughs> and a lot of times people don't address it, but we address it always, you know? So if you like Hol the Holocaust, <laughs> come to the come show. To totally. Very nice. And how has, been, how has the community been treating you as a young female comedian in Berlin? Is there a support mechanism? Is there a community? Do you mingle? With other Absolutely. young comedians, female comedians? Oh, sure. Um, like Kevin Hart says in his book, Acceptance is a Drug. Mm -hmm. uh, once after the first lockdown, I did two shows at Laughing Spree. Mm -hmm. The next morning, Chris sends me a text in the morning saying, um, Hey, Abby, forgot to tell you last night, loved your sets. I think you're on the right track. Keep doing this. So that text meant so much to me. That's when I decided, okay, this feels really good and I mm -hmm. want more of this. So I'm mm -hmm. going to take comedy seriously. And yeah, actually most of the people in the scene have been really good to me just hanging out with Pascal or Simon after the show. You know, I got to know a lot of things about comedy because I didn't know anything about comedy before I started stand-up. Mm -hmm. So they told me who Kevin Hart was. Really? Yeah. You didn't know Kevin Hart? I didn't know anybody. So let's explore. This is interesting. So you basically didn't know anything about stand-up. You came yeah. to a stand-up comedy show. Yeah. And you were like, I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Basically. It's just what was okay? Let's let's explore. What what did you find interesting? Just like the um. What, what was the thing that before coming to Laughing Spree? The, why I googled Laughing Spree was uh, because I was watching this uh, documentary on Prime. It's called Inside Jokes. It's about uh, just for laughs. Okay. So there was there was this comedian who went and did a very personal joke a joke like she does this joke about dating an abusive alcoholic and she does this joke about too drunk to land a punch. I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty intimate. And I was like, oh, people can do all this stuff on stage. I want to do that. Okay. So I looked for a com English comedy in Berlin and Laughing Street came up. Okay. That's when I went and I saw you know. Oh, okay. I want to be that guy. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, I, I always like take that as a as a as a. It's a compliment, but also like, hmm. So was it a bad night for me? <laughs> well, yeah, I, can, I can do that. This guy's not that great. <laughs> hey, these things happen. Okay, very nice. So like the, the the element of like being able to say things that you did not say before. Exactly. You're like, huh? I have things like that yeah. that I can tell. This is the first time I feel validated. Validated. Yes. Okay. Comedy gave me that. Really? Okay, maybe this goes back to the, the sexism conversation, right? Yeah, Did totally. you particularly feel invalidated in, in India? 
Well, I'm not sure whether I should say it on camera because Indians might find it offensive. But I mean, it's fine. I mean, most of my people, most of the people that follow me are from Pakistan, <laughs> so uh, I think they'll find it refreshing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's in their favor. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I felt like I did not have the same rights in India that I have here. Mm. Freedom of speech. Like, I can talk anything on stage. The com comics in India. They land in so much trouble because of saying stuff. So, is it because of political correctness, like yes. it is in like the West, for example, or is it just straight up censorship? Well, there's a lot of topics that you can't touch: religion, politics. Mm -hmm. You can't talk a lot about sex because conservative culture. Mm -hmm. Can't of you know offend people, so you have to. There's a lot of. Uh, but, but is it like the court of public opinion that is passing judgment? Yeah. Or is it actually legal ramifications? Both. Really? Comedians, get, I mean, they get police warrants most of the time. For Plenty what? Of time. Like, like talking about uh, the right wing nationalism uh, so then, or the prime minister. You can't talk about all of that. Because I was talking with this about Modi last, uh, like two podcasts ago, and you know, obviously China, you can't really mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Like I used to have a That's friend. That's even worse. Yeah. I used yeah. to have a friend who used to run a club in China, and they had to shut down because the government required them to submit the scripts for each joke for each show. Wow. Yeah. Like what the fuck? I'm doing. I'm, I'm like riffing. How am I going to sub sub submit scripts for that? Right. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, do people have gotten have people gotten in trouble in India for comedy? Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Do you remember which jokes are? Um, there's this comedian called Kunal Kamra. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of him? Sounds familiar. Yeah, he only do does topical bits. He does talks a lot of politics, mm -hmm. and he's um, talk always talking against the right wing. Mm -hmm. so that has landed him in a lot of trouble. He always gets police warrants and all that. Yeah. Like so. straight up. At yeah. The uh, are people being violent against comedian if they? Yeah, sure. This female comedian said something about a Hindu leader, mm -hmm. and uh, she got rape and death threats. Really? Yeah, pretty scary. Which is why my mom tells me, "Don't do political jokes. Don't talk about terrorism." Yeah, it's interesting yeah. because in this context, then you know, it's a, it's an instrument for advocating free speech, right? Yeah. Like you can kind of see like how the, the you can see how like the system. It's trying to keep you down, how to control yeah, your exactly. thought, man, not to get the conspiracy theories here. Yeah. But it's a, it's a clear indication. I think we have, in Romania, we have a similar thing with religion. Like every time, like a comedian, they, they, all the time they stay away from the religion. But sometimes they go on TV and do some jokes about religion, right? Because it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. They make so much money and they, they're building like the biggest church in the world because YOLO, <laughs> you know? Okay. And like the, one of the guys, basically the head priest, had his face... Uh, printed on the, the, this this like five ton bell made of gold. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, like well, bro, why not put Jesus's face? Yeah, why yours? Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus. We're doing this for Jesus, but I'm doing the work. You know, <laughs> like what the fuck? Okay. So like, whenever you approach those like this, like old older people usually you know, like ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's bro, always the older people. Die. <laughs> <laughs> and like, thanks to Corona. <laughs> yeah, don't wear a mask, please. Okay, uh, go out, don't wear a mask. You should. And this is one of the other things, like, because in church they were trying to, like, you know, kiss the icons in Christian Orthodox culture. Mm -hmm. You go mwah, mwah, on the icons, and they were like, "Don't do that, because you get Corona." Oh. They're like, okay. nah. Really? Fast forward, the head of the church died. But How can people be so ignorant? I mean, let the, this is natural selection, right? Yeah, yeah. So you think if you were to go back, to, would you do stand up in India? I don't think so, no. My material would not work in India. Yeah, because I'm thinking, uh, at the moment I'm doing uh, you know, different reaction videos on YouTube, guys, follow me on YouTube, and I was thinking of doing some Indian comedian stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I was telling you, I was watching some Indian comedians last night, and yeah, it just feels like it's... Basic. <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty basic, and it's like, okay, it's just like shenanigans. La 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 la, India this, India, we're eating this food, which is fine, but then like, but... But it's a young scene. I it's mean, you scene, yeah. can't get everything right in, within I five agree, years. Yeah. yeah, so basically the, the decision is I decided not to react because then I would have nothing super yeah. positive to say. Yeah. But then if you, find, if you guys have no any, 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 like, any, any comedians, any Indian comedians that are like particularly you know, controversial. Watch Kunal Kamra. Kunal Kamra? Yes. He's an aggressive guy? I'm, yes. I'm going to check him out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Does he do it in English or does he do it in Hindi? Uh, it's mostly in Hindi. Nice. Yeah. Do you speak Hindi? Yeah, totally. What else do you speak? Uh, English, Hindi, Uriya, Bengali, a little bit of Telugu, which is a South Indian language. Right. Yeah, so. What is speak Bengali? Uh, because Uriya is very similar to Bengali and I've spent a lot of time in Calcutta. 
Oh, okay. What did you do in Calcutta? I worked there. Oh, you worked in yeah. Calcutta? Tell yeah. us about the work life in India. How about that? Oh, God, it is so different here. Like, <laughs> like if you ask for a vacation in India, oh my God, that's very difficult. Even if you're sick, you have to go to work. There's no work life balance. Right. I could not think of having a hobby when I was in India. Peer like, pressure? I was always busy with work. Right. Yeah. Do you have a hobby now? Um, yeah, well, when I'm not working, I'm spending all the time on stand up, but stand up is not a hobby anymore. Right, okay, yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Makes sense. For me as well, it's like a hobby that I could actually, you know, not kick away like three months. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, this is gonna hang around for longer. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. How so, did you start stand up? I was doing, uh, I was, uh, well, I was kind of like, I, I've been watching stand up since like 2008. Okay. And I was telling you, like, at the time, like, Russell Peters was quite big online. Mm -hmm. uh, and I watched it, and it kind of stuck at the back of my head. I was watching more stuff online. I was watching Dave Chappelle, like, The Chappelle Show. Mm -hmm. uh, you should check out The Chappelle Show if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah, I have now. <laughs> and uh, around 2014 or 15, or 16, something around that area, I was in Singapore, and then basically they had a... No, I remember, okay, the situation is the following. I, I, I was... At the start of 2015, if I'm not mistaken, I was in Japan. Mm -hmm. Why were you in Japan? I was working in Japan for like three years, long story. Okay. And then uh, I was kind of like, uh, I was always doing jokes at work and we mm -hmm. were working like in a sales environment. Okay. So you could always do like very like dirty jokes like masturbation, you know, uh, this candidate's a piece of shit, I hope he dies. You oh, know, yeah. it's okay. kind of like, yeah, uh, this client is a, I hope, because the whole kind of like team was like that. Like, you know, just because it's like a very high pressure sales environment, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was always making people laugh. They were like, oh, I should be a stand-up comedian. So then I, I looked it up uh, and there was like, they were doing some shows in, in, in uh, Tokyo at some okay. Irish pubs. And then I went there one night uh, and I just watched. I was like, thinking, I was thinking, I just watched. There was this guy from LA and a couple of people. It was like, oh, okay, it's pretty cool. And then at that show, they Okay, so at this show, I, I met this guy. His name was BJ Fox. Okay. He now has a show in Japan on TV. He's like a, uh, he's like a, the, the, the show is about him being in, uh, a British guy and his wife being Japanese, and they have like this like international couple, mm -hmm. and the dad lives the Japanese dad lives with them. Anyway, BJ Fox. So then he was like, uh, I added me to this group, and in this group they said, guys, uh, we were just notified last minute. We're, we want to put together this show for this American comedian, and please share it and bring all your friends if you can. Right? We can only do like 50, 60 people. Okay. Uh, and it was like an impromptu show. And the show was for this comedian called Hannibal Buress. Mm -hmm. You know Hannibal Buress? No. You should check him out. Him okay. and Eric Andre were, you know Eric Andre? Yes. Him and Eric Andre were in Japan visiting and they wanted to do a show. Okay. Uh, and then basically none of the Japanese bookers wanted to do it with them because they were like, this is Japan, you need to, you know, you need to phone three months in advance uh -huh. to set up the venue, you know, not even Louis C.K. can get a, that's exactly what they said, can get a show. Okay. Um, and I didn't know who the fuck this guy was, right? I didn't know Eric Andre at the time, didn't know how to breast. And then basically I told one of my friends from work and he's from New York, like a Dominican guy. And he's like, what the fuck, are you kidding? Are you joking? Is, are you, like, is this a prank? And I was like, no, I, the tickets are 2,000 yen, which is like uh, basically like 15 bucks. Okay. 2,000 yen, they have a limited amount, do you want some? He's like, yeah, fuck yeah, I want some. Uh, and then basically we got the tickets and then I looked it up. And you know, at the time, Eric Andre had done like maybe like three seasons of the Eric Andre show. And Hannibal Buress was like, I think this was just before or after he blew up because of the uh, Bill Cosby allegations. Okay. You know, he did like mm -hmm. a, so uh, Hannibal Buress is the guy that started talking about Bill Cosby raping women ah. in the show. Okay. And then after that, it kind of picked up volume and more women started coming out, which okay. ended up leading to the Me Too movement. Me Too, okay. So then I didn't know who the guys were, but then we went to the thing and then basically it was kind of like going to Caracas. Okay. You know, that's how big the venue was, right? Uh -huh, okay. And it was packed with people everywhere. That, uh -huh. But the venue was like even smaller than Caracas. And then uh -huh. basically Cannibal Bress was traveling and with other country with some friends from LA and they were there for like a week and they basically just got on stage without doing comedy. And uh, yeah, everybody was there because they knew who they were and the jokes were like, Japan! Noodles, am I right? <laughs> okay. There's a lot of noodles in this country. Okay. And I was like, what the fuck? And so it was kind of funny, and I was like, oh, okay, it's pretty interesting. And, you know, we kind of hung out with them after the show, you know, smoked a cigarette, and drinking beers. Okay. Because uh, they were just hanging out, right? Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I started watching the Eric Andre show, and I was like, what the fuck, this is hilarious. Okay. And then I started, like, watching some Hannibal Buress stuff. And then I think at that time, Hannibal Buress came out with his special called Animal Furnace. Okay. Uh, no, Hannibal Buress has this special where he does the Edinburgh Fringe. Mm -hmm. It's called Hannibal Does the Fringe. 
Have you been to Fringe? Yeah, I've been once. Uh, uh, and then basically I watched that and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool and successful because it's in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know, I'm from Europe. But uh, yeah, and then I kind of like stuck to it and then I ended up moving to Singapore. And when I was in Singapore, I was on a date with this girl and then basically this guy who was her friend kind of interrupted and like kind of cock blocked me. So anyways, I, I, I foresee that okay. as a cock block. Uh -huh. And I started making jokes and I was like, hey guy, blah, blah, blah. And okay. he was like, hey, you're kind of funny. Do you want to come to stand up? I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Wow. And then I went and I did stand up. And you did not bomb the first time? I mean, in my mind, it went great. <laughs> yes, yeah. Amazing. It went amazing. But then I rewatched it a couple of years after and I was like, oh my uh, God. Yeah, the then it's cringe. <laughs> oh, the cringe, the cringe. Yeah. I was looking at the floor. It's terrible. It was like, uh, yeah, I'm from Romania. We're known for sucking dick. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my God. God. Oh <laughs> my God. I was watching it. It was oh, so bad. Okay. But at that time, the first opener that I had was uh, I am from Romania, Romania, the Malaysia of Europe. Okay. Which is like the Mexico of Europe, but like uh -huh. even more relevant for Singapore. Yeah, makes sense. And they died because they're super racist against Malaysians. Ah. And it was such a strong hit. And then they were like, wow. And then ever since then, I started doing it. And we were doing it in Singapore in like these uh, Irish. Uh, Irish bar uh -huh. at, the, at, the, at the almost the base the, the, the roof not the roof the what do you call it? the attic okay and it was like a table on like a little stool thing and we had like f there's always because it was the sh free shows and there would be like three people in the audience which is like some two students on a date <laughs> okay like, and like and like 20 comedians in the back where did they perform <laughs> and did you dramatically quit your job and just no 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 no, no, no. I, I did that for like uh, a couple of years then I ended up moving away to Estonia I did Estonia and then afterwards it was like maybe three four years after I started is stand-up comedy big in Eastern Europe? It's getting big now, yeah. Like, like in yeah. Romania, it's massive. Like all the stand-up comedians, they have like, whenever they post a video, it's like a million, two million views, boom. And it's, <laughs> and like in the country, like 22 million people, right? Uh, it's not like 35 million India views, yeah, you know? yeah. which Mohit has shown me some videos, like, pff, like <laughs> the guy has a We are making money out of comedy. Yeah, but uh, in Romania, it's pretty big. They have a, Romania's Got Talent equivalent just for stand-up. Oh, okay. Just for stand-up. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so it's gotten really big. There's clubs in Bucharest now, and now it's kind of all shut down. So it's kind of, but um, mm. people are like, well, you know, the level of the comedy is still somewhere like gay people, am I right? Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, you know that kind of stuff. Okay. It's like still okay. somewhat sexist, somewhat racist, somewhat a lot yeah. of swear words, a lot of punchlines that are like fuck, you know what, my dick, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, at least it's not flight observations. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's saturated now. Stop it. Yeah, that's the thing. Is there's a very there's a high lack of uh, people are okay with you being vulgar, I guess, in Romania. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. We'll see exactly how that goes in terms of. I did a couple of shows there. People have also a lot of Romanians speak English, which okay. I'm sure a lot of Indians do as well. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we consume a lot more uh, culture from the West. So everybody like watches. They they follow like the Joe Rogan podcast. Okay. You know, Andrew Schultz. They know. They know, like, you know, the, the American comedians, the Tom Segura, the, the Trevor Noah stuff. Okay. So they have, like, an education of stand-up, but I guess it's still, every time I go and do stand-up Romania, it's like they're, they're somewhat sh shell-shocked to see, like, a Romanian guy do stand-up comedy in English. <laughs> it's like a lot, it's like, it's like, oh, what? Does your mom come to shit see your show? Yeah, but I just speak English. She's come, I should get to some of my shows in Singapore, but she doesn't speak English, she's just in the back. You know, like, like you know, like all those puppies are like, <laughs> oh. I guess it's working, you know, people okay, are laughing. I guess it's, she's supportive. <laughs> yeah. Has your mom, do you tell your mom to stand up? Yeah, yeah. My mom is pretty chill about it, but the, they just see this as something that I'm doing on the side. They don't see me taking Until you get married? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm turning 29 tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, yeah, very nice. Happy birthday. It's very sad. That's okay. Well, it's, you still have, you know, one more year before you turn the, oh, the 30. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they're worried that I'm not married and I'm worried that I'm, I've started stand up really late. No, it's not. I started like, uh, uh, I, I kind of like went full time when I was like 28. But okay. there's, uh, there's a lot of people that started quite late in their careers. I think before 30 is still fine. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with the, uh, that's, a, that's a good question because I was thinking the same thing. And I, I mean, one of the reasons why I decided to like quit, I was like, you know, I'm 28 now. If I don't do it now, I'm not gonna, never going to do it. Right? Never going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. What are your plans? Like, are you planning to move to New York? And I mean, not necessarily. I think at the moment, uh, I was thinking before that, I was thinking, okay, I got to go to New York to kind of make it big. Mm -hmm. But then now, the more and more I'm kind of observing the market here in Europe, you know, like even before when nobody knew me, I was selling out shows, right? Just because I was there. Yeah. Because there's so much demand of like local flavored comedy 
that people are like, you know, the only the, the, there's a monopoly of comedy from US, right? Yeah. But a lot of times it's like it's like secondhand content. Mm-hmm. Because like I don't know how the what the fuck is you know the metro? What? Okay. Uh, this is Lithuania, bro. You know, yeah. nobody talks about potatoes. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> nobody talks about borscht. Okay. And when you kind of do uh, take this comedy and you bring it to the people, they love it, uh-huh. you know, and they kind of yeah. share it and they give more stuff. And even now with TikTok, it's putting stuff on TikTok. You can see a lot of people that are consuming. Well, 80% of the, no, 92% of the people that are following me on TikTok are from Europe and from wow. like Saudi Arabia, from like uh, other places, like non American, right? Wow. So it's like there's a big market here and it's untouched. So I'm thinking, you know, once the show's pop back again, do more shows here. And yeah, I mean, the space. scene in Berlin is pretty good. We have so many mics. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's easier to get on stage here than yeah, yeah. in the US. A lot of stage time. I was on stage every single day. Exactly. And you're like, you're like, you know, just barely in, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's I like, why? Started. Like, you would never get the stage time in New York or in London for that matter. Yeah. So pretty I'm thinking, yeah, let's hang around Europe until like I get big, uh, until create a big enough uh, profile to be able to, like, if I go to the US, I'm assuming I'll go there to tour like 300, 400 type of people stadiums, right? Not stadiums, mm-hmm. but like theaters. Okay. Um, which is not that far away, you know, because it's like, uh, for example, in Hamburg when I did the show, there was like 120 people. What's your highest? Uh, when I was opening for Gaffigan. Okay. Uh, when I was opening for Jim Gaffigan in uh, Riga, we had like 900 people. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, hey guys, how's it going? It's, uh, it's sad to be some European, am I right? And they were like, whoa, this guy. That hey, must have been so sweet. Sweet. This gets this guy Mother gets it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I did that, and then uh, I think after what, after that, uh, Vienna was like six hundred people. Oh wow! And it's like a sea. Of, have you seen like the photos on my uh, Facebook? No. You check one. It's like a sea of people. Okay, I'll stalk you. You're like wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so that was pretty good. And then you know, the, the sea, you go into that. The, the the situation with this type of uh, shows is the bigger the audience, the easier it is. Yeah. Because you just need one there, one there, and they're all gathered to laugh, and they they, they, don't, they didn't wander in into a 600 people type of theater, right? Yeah. Everybody's coming there to see comedy. Yeah. Uh, so it's more difficult to do like rooms like, you know, Caracas or like. Yeah, where people are sitting on your face. Yeah, and then some of them are there because. <laughs> they can it's free. see you swear. <laughs> yeah, and there's some of them are there because it's free and they have nothing else to do, and they're yeah. like, yeah. Well, why not, right? When was the last time you bombed like really hard? I've never seen you bomb. I don't know. I think I did bomb sometime. I, I mean, like bomb for like you know like a like a minute, and nothing happens, and then uh, like you know pull it back with some jokes, or like mm-hmm. I do some crowd work, some new joke, and it doesn't work. But like well, like the whole show. Oh, I know when I bombed last time. Oh my god, I went to I did a show before COVID uh, in Jan, and I think it was March in uh, Denmark, okay. and uh, I sold like forty sh- tickets to the show. Okay. Only four people showed up. Oh. Yeah. Bro, there were more candles on the tables than there were people in the room. And so I was like, all right, we're doing this, guys. <laughs> so I did the show for like four people. Okay. And it was just like, everybody was just super awkward. They're like, ha, ha, ha. that looks. <laughs> you know, I really thought there'd be more people. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too, bro. So that was, that was rough. I think that was, and that, that was like kind of chores. Like, am I going to do this or not? And the, the, the funny thing is, the room they gave me, a, it was a free room. It was like a, like a rock concert venue. And wow. it, would, it would sit up to 120 people. Oof. And it was like four people. It must have sucked. <laughs> yeah, and then like, there was like big spotlights and like the stage was there. Oh, so I said, can, can you put the spotlight on the corner of the table? Because I'm going to be performing on the corner of the table for these guys. <laughs> Did you record it? Nah, I, I, oh, I think I recorded like deleted immediately. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult to watch those videos. It was so much. Uh, uh, it was watching like, your bombs, oh my God. Yeah, imagine doing crowd work with four people. When did you start doing crowd work? Just this year. This really? year, yeah. Yeah, and then like, whoosh, started doing pretty well. And a lot of people like to consume the crowd work. It's easy to get out there and people like it. It's free content. You okay. don't need to script it. You don't need to sacrifice material. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that four people room. Oh, it's like one of those things like, Jesus Christ. And then the, <laughs> before that, I did this uh, vegan restaurant in Brussels. Like like 5 p.m. like 6 p.m. in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and there was lights coming in from the window. The setup was really really weird, and I just remember eating shit for like an hour. <laughs> and they're all paid. There's and I have no opener. Oh uh, god. There's no openers. It's just me. <laughs> Everybody paid 12 euros. It was like 16 people, not that many either, and I'm just eating shit for like a whole hour. They're like and they're like just politely laughing. <laughs> the whole hour. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and I'm like. Oh my god. 
Oh, so, okay, I was like, all right, this is, this is rough. And before that, I was doing a show in Croatia in Split uh, with two other Croatian comedians. And then, because we, we were supposed to do like a free five city tour in Croatia. Okay. And in this particular. English comedy in Croatia? Yeah, yeah, they speak a lot because they have a lot of tourists, they speak a lot of English. Okay. But anyway, the point is, I was in Croatia. Uh, there was this really dingy bar. Okay. And we were supposed to, I was supposed to do comedy in English, and mm-hmm. the first guys before me, they were doing Croatian. And almost nobody in the room spoke English. So okay. I performed 50 minutes of comedy in English for nobody that spoke English. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> the only thing that pulled me through that was that right before I got on stage, I got the message about like opening for Jim Gaffigan. Because I think I would have, I would have like killed myself right there. <laughs> it was such a rough gig. Oh. Okay, I think we need to vacate the room in like four minutes. So okay. uh, I think we kind of cut it. We have to kind of cut it here. Mm-hmm. Do you have any closing remarks, Abhishek, from India? <laughs> from India, no. Move to Berlin. Okay. Any any hopes and dreams for your comedy career? Well, the initial hope was to become you. Now I'm thinking of becoming bigger than you. It's good. That's a good. It's a good, it's a good goal. It's a good goal. You got to start <laughs> writing jokes. Yeah. You got to start putting stuff on TikTok. Yeah, that's the main goal. Follow him on TikTok. Gotta follow. Do you want to plug any social media or something? Sorry? Do you want to plug any social media? Uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram. Uh, gotta put the name in the video because okay. my name know. is difficult to pronounce. Okay, well, that's, right. that's it for now, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Another episode of Labrador Energy. This is Abhishek. This is Dragush. Have a nice Comedy. one. Hey, guys. How's it going? This is Dragush. Uh, straight from the stage. Wanted to thank you a lot for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do subscribe like and comment and also watch some of my other videos i've got a bunch of videos throughout this whole channel so i hope you guys enjoy it thank you and see you in the next one